ever wanted to create awesome, interactive 3D web experiences like this? Or maybe you want to create a 3D game that can run right in your web browser. If so, you're in luck because I'm going to show you how to create your own 3D web app or game with 3.js and Vite in under five minutes. Before we begin, you'll need to make sure that you have Node.js installed on your machine. So Node.js is a JavaScript runtime environment, which you'll be using to run all of our JavaScript code. So once you have Node installed, you want to bring up Visual Studio Code, which I have on the left-hand side here. And I also have my browser shown on the right-hand side. So just to make sure that you have Node installed correctly, you can do Node-V in the terminal here, and we can see that it's printing out the version of Node that we have. Now we're going to be using the Node Package Manager, or NPM, which should come with your Node installation. We can check this by doing npm-v, and that will print out the version of your Node Package Manager that's installed on your machine. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get Vite installed. So we'll do npm install save dev Vite. And the reason that we specify save dev here is this doesn't actually get deployed with our website. It's just a build and development tool. So we'll save it as a development dependency so it doesn't get packaged with our website. And then we need to install the 3.js dependency, which is npm install save three. So 3.js will be bundled with our website. So we use the save option here. Now you wanna go ahead and create a new HTML file called index.html. And we'll just do a very simple web page here. So once we have our basic web page here, let's get in Vite to serve that web page for us. So you're going to go into your package.json here, and you're going to want to add a new section called scripts. And let's add a script called dev. And that will be Vite. And then set your host to 127.0.0.1. Now you may not need this step if you're on a Windows machine. You likely don't need to do this, but on a Mac, the default local host typically doesn't work because your host name is something else. So by setting it to the local host address here, that will make sure that Vite works for you. So now we can go back down on our console. You can do npm run dev. Now here we can see that Vite is running its development server and it's serving our web page at this address here. So on Mac, I can command click on this and it'll open up our web page right here. And we can see our hello world. So we know that our web page is working and Vite is serving our web page. So now that our web page is working, let's go ahead and set up a basic 3.js scene. So we're going to want to import a script here of type module. And that is going to be called main.js. Let's go ahead and create a new main.js file in our root directory. So first we need to import our 3.js dependency. So we'll do import as three from three. And you wanna go ahead and create a new scene. And this will be the thing that holds all of our 3D objects. It's kind of the base object in 3.js. So now let's go ahead and create a camera so we can actually view what's in our scene. So we'll create a new constant called camera, and that will be a perspective camera. We'll give that a field of view of 75 degrees, and then we'll give it the aspect ratio of our window, which is the inner width divided by the inner height of our window. And then we'll set the near and far plane to these values here. Next, we wanna create our WebGL renderer. So this will be responsible for rendering the contents of our scene. We'll create a new constant called renderer. And this will be a new three WebGL renderer. And we won't need to pass in any parameters for this. So we need to set the size of our render target. We'll set that to the inner width of our window. And the height will be the inner height of our window. Finally, we need to attach the output of our renderer to our HTML document. So to do that, we do document.body.appendChild, and then we get the DOM element associated with our renderer. So now we need to add an object to our scene so we actually have something to look at. So let's first create the geometry for that object. So we'll do new three box geometry, use the default settings here. So you can think of the geometry as kind of the 
actual structure of the object, the vertices and the edges and all of that and the faces. And then we need to create a material to tell 3JS how to render that object. We'll do a, let's just do a basic material, a mesh basic material. And then in here, we can pass a color. We'll do a hex value of red here, that will render a red cube. So once we have our geometry and our material, we need to combine them together into what's called a mesh. We'll create a new variable called cube, and this will be a three dot mesh. And all we need to do is pass in our geometry and material that we previously defined, and that's all we need. Finally, we'll add that cube to our scene. And so we can actually see this cube. Let's set the Z position of our camera to five. Otherwise, we're gonna be right inside of the cube and we won't be able to see it. So we're almost there, we'll almost have an up and running scene here. Let's create a function called animate. And this is gonna be our render loop that gets called every frame. So first we'll need to request an animation frame. And we pass in animate as the callback for that. And then to make this somewhat interesting, let's rotate our cube. So we'll add a little bit to the X and Y rotation every frame. And then finally, we'll tell our renderer to render the scene. So we pass in our scene and the camera that we want to render the scene from. So the last thing that we need to do is just to call our animate method to kickstart the render loop. So we finished up all the code that we need to render our scene. So if I go ahead and save this, we should see a spinning cube pop up on our screen here. Let's go ahead and clean up our HTML file quickly. We'll get rid of this hello world. And then let's add a little styling here to get rid of that white border. So do body margin zero. And there we go. We have our completed 3JS scene. So I hope this video was helpful for you to get up and running with 3JS using Vite. And if you like this video, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. Until next time, keep on chilling, coding, and creating, my friends. Take care.